Good evening. On behalf of our host, Lieutenant General Spellman, the 55th Chief of Engineers and Commanding General, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, I'd like to welcome you to today's Gold de Fleury Award Ceremony in honor of Major General Retired Randall Randy Castro. Due to current events related to COVID, we were unable to recognize General Castro, but we were finally here able to recognize him as this award ceremony is way overdue. At this time, please stand for the playing of the national anthem and invocation given by Mr. Wilbert Paines. <laughs> Good evening all. To the honoree, Major General Retired Randy Castro and his family, to current and former military, civilian, corporate leaders, friends, family, co-workers present participating in this ceremony today. We bear witness to, bes to bestowing such a prestigious honor to General Castro. As I give thanks for this ceremony in the manner of my faith, I ask that you join me in a manner of your choosing belief and faith. I pray. Dear Heavenly Father, today we come with heads bowed, hearts filled with joy for this special occasion. Thankful for the gift of life, family, friends, and co-workers. Thankful for bringing us from our beginning to now, never truly knowing what the future would hold, but trusting in you. The long career of Major General Retired Randy Castro, I am sure he has seen his share of ups and downs, many crossroads of critical decisions, a career that required sacrifice, patience, and strong conviction a career that embraced the knowledge of learned and wisdom gained, at times requiring courage and humility. Thank you, O oh Lord, for guiding and paving a bright path to an unknown future. From West Point, Stanford, Alaska, Hawaii, Korea, Germany, and many places in between, now we are here today in Atlanta to honor, to pay recognition to his long standing career, to a leader for his lifetime achievements and contributions to the Army engineering. Thank you, O oh Lord, for instilling deep within his heart values that have helped shape the person we honor today. We know that others played a role in this wonderful career, none more than his family. Bless them and keep them safe. Today is a special day in the journey you paved. May he cherish the moment and know his journey is still unfolding. Oh Lord, we ask that you continue to guide him so that he continues to help others, continue to provide service to this nation, and that he enjoy and live each day to the fullness thereof. These and all things I pray. Amen.
You may be seated, Mr. Paines. At this time, I'd like to recognize General Castro's family. We're pleased to welcome his wife, Judy Castro, their daughter, Kim Castro, son, Major Jason Castro, grandson, Will Castro, and sister-in-law, Jeannie Ross, and nephew, David Lockhart. We're honored to welcome Major General Richard Heikamp, Deputy Commanding General, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Command Sergeant Major Patrickson Toussaint, the 14th Command Sergeant Major of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, Major General Jeff Milhorn, Deputy Commanding General for Military and International Operations, and Major General Butch Graham, Deputy Commanding General for Civil and Emergency Operations. I'd like to also recognize the former Deputy Commanding General, Major General, retired Richard Kaiser. Our MSC commanders and senior executive service that are here today attending the executive governance meeting and many joining us virtually. Thanks for being part of the special day. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our host for today's ceremony, the 55th. Chief of Engineers and Commanding General of the U.S. Army, Corps of Engineers, Lieutenant General Spellman. Great. Uh, thanks, Sean. And ladies and gentlemen, I just want to take a brief moment and welcome everyone uh, to this uh, ceremony. Whether you're here in the room, we've got a, a great uh, small crowd who are joining us uh, virtually. We're really, really honored that you could be here. Uh, Colonel Lloyd said, sir, a long, long overdue recognition for a, a very special uh, leader. Um, if you've been to a DeFlory ceremony before, you know that we, we always try to start out uh, these events with a little bit of history. Uh, what, what occurred? Who was Francois DeFlory? And why this medal? And we, particularly during the COVID environment, it bringing that history alive, either from the podium or through the camera. So, sir, with your permission, tonight, first cut on a, uh, a video presentation that the, the great team put together that talks a little bit about the importance of this medal. So, Rob and team, can you go ahead and roll the, uh, roll the tape? I am Lieutenant General Scott Spellman, 55th Chief of Engineers and Commanding General of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. I'm coming to you today from Stony Point, New York, on the banks of the Hudson River. It was at this location in July of 1779 that one of the heroes of our regiment, Lieutenant Colonel Francois de Fleury, exhibited exceptional leadership under fire and was later recognized by the Continental Congress, who even had a medal struck in his honor. The de Fleury Medal was named in honor of Francois Louis Tessedre de Fleury, a French military engineer serving in the Continental Army. In 1777, de Fleury volunteered to serve with the American Army in our fight for independence from Britain. The Continental Congress appointed de Fleury a captain of engineers, and quickly proving himself in and Brandywine, he was promoted to lieutenant colonel. On June 1, 1779, the British captured Stony Point, New York on the western side of the Hudson River and Verplanks Point directly across the river to the east. Possession of the two strategic forts brought a key part of the river under enemy control and also threatened the Americans' position at West Point, located less than 15 miles upriver. After reinforcing Stony Point, the British commander regarded it as a little Gibraltar. Recognizing the danger, General Washington planned a daring surprise assault. On the night of July 15th to the 16th, he ordered a recently formed light infantry corps led by Brigadier General Mad Anthony Wayne to attack Stony Point. The corps consisted of four battalions. Colonel Christian Old Denmark Febinger led the 1st Battalion with De Fleury as second in command. On July 15th, the Corps, except for a small diversionary force, unloaded weapons and turned in their ammunition. Secrecy was so tight, the troops did not know they were going to attempt to recapture Stony Point. For such a risky assault, Surprise was vital, and the attack was to take place in total darkness. 
six bayonets and hand-to-hand combat were the orders of the day. The Continentals launched a two-prong attack on the fortress. De Fleury led the assault up the rocky southern slope. First over the wall, De Fleury was followed by a wave of American bayonets. Rushing to the flagpole, De Fleury cut the British colors from their staff. Just after midnight, the 29-year-old De Fleury single-handedly struck the colors of the British 17th Regiment of Foot. By 2 a.m., General Wayne triumphantly wrote to Washington saying, The fort and garrison are ours. Our officers and men behaved like men who are determined to be free. So it was that on October 1st, 1779, De Fleury stood before the Continental Congress to be praised for his valor at Stony Point. For his intrepid behavior, the Continental Congress ordered that a medal be struck in his honor. On the obverse of the medal is the Latin inscription translated as a memorial and reward for courage and boldness. On the reverse, again in Latin, fortifications, marshes, enemies overcome. Beneath the fort is the legend, Stony Point, carried by storm, July 15, 1779. Today, the hallmarks of the Army Engineer Regiment stand on twin pillars, supporting combat operations and building vital infrastructure in the United States. The regiment currently consists of two elements, the 91,000 Army Engineer soldiers serving in active duty reserve and National Guard troop units, and the 35,000 largely civilian members of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. Under the leadership of the Chief of Engineers, the combined engineer team provides engineering expertise to the Army and responds to the nation's toughest challenge. In 1989, the Engineer Regiment adopted the De Fleury Medal as a symbol to recognize today's engineer achievements because of the shared values demonstrated by the man for whom it was struck. The Engineer Regiment makes four award levels of the De Fleury Medal, steel, bronze, silver, and gold. Number one, the gold medal. The United States Army Chief of Engineers is the only person authorized to award the gold medal each year to an individual whose contributions to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the Army Engineer Regiment exemplify boldness, courage, and commitment to a strong national defense. Starting in 2011, two gold medals are awarded annually, one to an individual outside the regiment and of national prominence, and one to an individual inside the regiment. The credit for today's De Fleury Award program goes to Major General Daniel R. Schroeder, who in 1989 was the commanding general of Fort Leonard Wood and U.S. Army Engineer School Commandant. He wanted an award that would tie together the history of contributions of the Army Regiment, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and the birth of our great nation. Today, the U.S. Army Engineer Association is the arbiter of the De Fleury Medal Program. The first Gold De Fleury Medal recipient was Honorable John O. Marsh, Jr., the Secretary of the Army in 1989. The most recent recipients are Major General Retired Randall Castro and Congresswoman Grace Napolitano of California. Because values have special meaning to our engineer soldiers and those who support them, it is only appropriate that our premier engineer award represent a soldier who served valiantly during the birth of our great nation. And we saw those values on full display 242 years ago, right here on Stony Point in Lieutenant Colonel Francois de Fleury. Essay ons, Army Strong, Building Strong. So ladies and gentlemen, I am proud to present the first one of this year's Gold De Fleury medals to a man who has dedicated his life to shaping the young minds of engineers of tomorrow. And of course, Major General Retired Randy Castro. Uh, you can read his biography in the program, but I do want to get, share with you a few highlights. General Castro began his distinguished career upon graduation from the United States Military Academy at West Point in a class of 1975, where he received his Bachelor's of Science degree. He went on to earn his master's degree in civil engineering from Stanford University. His military education includes the engineer officer basic and advanced courses. Uh, he is also a graduate of the U.S. Corps, Command and General Staff College, the U.S. Naval War College, where he earned a master's degree on national security strategy and subsequently served there as a professor. 
During his 35 years of service to the nation, General Castro held a variety of command and staff assignments, originating from the platoon all the way up to the Army level. He commanded an engineer battalion and an engineer brigade. More on that in a couple of moments. He served as a regional commander in the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers twice, first in our Pacific Ocean Division and later in our South Atlantic Division. He served as a special assistant to the commanding general of U.S. Army Training and Doctrine Command and later ser concurrently served as the commandant of the U.S. Army Engineer School and commanding general of the U.S. Army Maneuver Support Center of Excellence, where he oversaw the engineer school, the military police school, and of course, our chemical school. Today, General Castro is an active board member on the Army Engineer Association. And after retirement from the United States Army, he served as the senior vice president of federal programs at AECOM's Technical Services Business Division. And in 2018, joined Black and Veatch as Special Projects Corps. And for those of you who may not know, Black & Veatch is one of the world's most successful engineering procurement, consulting, and construction companies, and is one of our, one of USACE's biggest partners in the engineering and construction street today. ...contributed to the engineer mission within the Army and brought great credit upon him, the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, and the U.S. Army Engineer Regiment. Signed, Scott A. Spellman, Lieutenant General, U.S. Army, Chief of Engineers. <laughs> General Castro, the floor is yours. Well, what a great, 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 great uh, experience this is. And, uh, and like I think anyone would say, it's pretty darn humbling um, to get any award, but to be recognized as uh, for this award is just un an unbelievable honor. And, and, it, and it really humbles me to, to be a, a, a recipient of something that I would never, ever, ever, ever consider <laughs> being eligible for. Um, so I'm, although humbled, I'm not without a speech. Not without a speech. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you know, um, Chief, General Spellman, I mean, thanks a lot for doing this. Uh, you know, this is not easy to pull together. It takes time to coordinate you, and uh, I, I did a great, masterful job here. And to be the, the, the first one to get the gold with having that video out to show the rest of the regiment what the, what it means and what it came about is really, really very, very meaningful. I also want to uh, thank your staff who did just great, wonderful coordination to get my family here and also to, ha to have this. It's very, very meaningful. Um, General uh, Jason Kelly, thanks for hosting this, and uh, you know it's really special for me to be with someone who, when I was in the engineer brigade, he was a captain on my staff. Um, he hasn't stopped smiling since. <laughs> uh, I also want to do a shout out to uh, General Brian Watson, who uh, is the, the president of AEA, a very, very, very close, close, close friend of mine, and uh, I know was instrumental in uh, making all this happen. Also, uh, General Retired. Uh, Joe Schradell is here as a classmate of mine and also followed me into, uh, came into South Atlantic Division. You know, um, when I get up to talk, it, it, I usually talk about certain themes, you know, and mine are very dominant in that I'd like to talk about balance, team of teams, making a positive difference, and, uh, and uh, the power, power of being positive. But today I'm not going to do that. Uh, I am only going to talk about two things, and it's going to talk, I'm gonna talk, I really do want to talk about family, and I want to talk about a theme that just has been been with me, and that's uh, I'm, I'm labeling it love dot 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 people. So uh, if, you know, and, I, and as I like to talk about it many times, is you know I'm part of a lot of different teams, you know, uh, but first in line on that team is is, is my is my family, and um, you know, I, and I know I know that this award is recognition of making a quote unquote significant contribution, and any contribution that I have or I'm being recognized. With, I made it hand in hand with my wife Judy, and the support of my family. <laughs> oh, whoa, whoa, wait, wait, I'm not done yet. I want to talk about Judy for a, for a second, you know, because we, a lot of people talk about you know their spouse and helping them along and being side by side. And I, I just have to mention a couple things. I I, I really do. Um, 
you know, she is, is always working to help Army families, Sapper families, and, 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 make, and make the Army better. Um, she was a board member in so many organizations that I, I, I can't count, I, at least 20, at least 20. And every one of those board members were in place to help family members and families and, uh, and, and sappers and soldiers. Um, well, she was, when I was a battalion commander in Germany, which uh, uh, the chief mentioned at that, that time period, she was a volunteer of the year for Germany. Uh, she's a board member on, uh, on the Military Child Education Coalition. That coalition is a nationwide coalition that tries to ensure that children, f children and military family members, as they move from place to place to place, that they can do that unencumbered by certain curriculums and that they can pass along credits in other ways. And she was a, a, a significant leader there. And even today, even today, she sits with me as I work with my Black and Beach team and talk, when we, when we talk about and then she listens in on our strategy discussions to understand what I do and what we're doing and day-to-day and -day things and then she gives me some advice in, in talking through that. Most importantly, this last thing I want to talk to you about is, uh, which I, I, it just, I, I, I just gives me goosebumps whenever I think about it, but she was a key leader in providing adaptive clothing to uh, our wounded service members and she did that at Walter Reed and, and she would uh, be one of the first people to meet soldiers, service members, that came out of the operating room mangled and, 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 and um, um, just, you know, just, just wounded terribly, just terribly, and one of the first ones to kind of talk them through what their life will be like in that, in that manner, and also she would provide adaptive clothing, her, her team would provide adaptive clothing for that soldier so they could do quote-unquote normal type things. Um, I, I thought it was something in, that I probably could not have endured the emotional trauma day in and day out of dealing with these soldiers, but she did it, and uh, it's something that I just can't forget. I think it's, it's unbelievable, but all those things. Thank you, Judy, and, it's, and now this thing is for you, too. As the chief said, my son Jason is here with his, my grandson Will. Uh, J Jason's an uh, engineer in the, in the Army, like I was, obviously. But also my father was an engineer in the Army. So it's in our blood. It's in our, and I think it must be in our blood. And uh, one of the things I want to highlight about, about Jason, because we talk about the goal of significant contributions, but you know, um, you know, my son, you know, he led a, when he was a, when he was a lieutenant, led a, um, an engineer platoon, sapper platoon, as an IED hunter and, uh, and, and clear in, in Iraq for, for uh, 15 months. And uh, in that 15 months got blown up in the teens of times and not one soldier did he lose, not one. And then he and Doug, great, great, great command sergeant major when he, when he was a company commander, took a, a, a heavy equipment company and turned them into sappers and turned those sappers into IED uh, hunters and killers um, and, went, and took that, that company to Afghanistan and in a year didn't lose another soldier, didn't lose a soldier. This mission is one where it was the highest casualty rate of any of our units that were over there. And, and uh, for someone to be able to, to bring all our soldiers home, um, I, to me, it's a massive accomplishment. I'm real proud of you, Jason. <laughs> Watching from home is Jason's wife, Lauren, who uh, very much, like I described with Judy, enhances Jason in many, many ways and uh, contributes to military families wherever she goes while also raising and leading a wonderful family. And also my uh, granddaughter Emma, who uh, is 10 years old, is, is watching in, and, and, and she's a leukemia survivor, five years of fighting leukemia and beat it, who's the strongest, most determined, and heroic person I know. She's a flat winner. She is a winner and would be unbelievably successful because of her will. Speaking of will, uh, my grandson here, Will, when he was down, I wanted to define Will by something that happened when he was 10 years old. After we spent Christmas together, I said, and I said, you know, how was Christmas? He said, Christmas, that was the best Christmas ever, which he says every Christmas. <laughs> and uh, I said, so, well, what were your top Christmas presents? He says, I have five. I have five. And I wrote them down. This is what he said. Number five is Legos I got. Number four is a watch I got. Number three is a Nintendo. And you know, listen, uh, uh, number two is love. Uh, people love me and take care of me. And number one is family. Actually, I have people that I love and care about and can hang out with. And he has those same family and love attributes now that he displayed when he was just a little 10-year-old. And uh, 
And then finally, I have my daughter, Kim, who uh, is the happiest person I know. And I've learned more from Kim about perspective, about happiness, than anyone in my life. She's so, she's, uh, so very connected to God, so good to people, so loving. I'm convinced, I'm convinced, you can't convince me otherwise, that she is an absolute angel. I mean, a real one. <laughs> you know, I also have my Black and Beach team here, a, a, a number of them, and I think it's a, a few more tuning in online, and I, I really appreciate them being there. They're like you know, family for me, too. And as I said, when I retired from the, from the, from the military, the Corps was a big part of my family, and, and many of you here are, are, I'm, I'm just very, very close to, and I, I just can't stop with those emotions about family. Now let me talk about love, dot, 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 people. It won't be that long as what I just did, but I want to talk to you about something that um, I, I've been thinking about. And clearly a lot of us know that accomplishments, and get, get, uh, when you measure things and you look back in life, it's really not about uh, what rank you achieve, how much money you make, what, what position you're in. At the end of the day, it, it most likely is the people that you've influenced and impact, impacted. And, and I want to talk a little bit about that. And I, for me, you know, um, I mean, I, I, I love people. I actually do love, I mean, I love people. I, I do. I love people like the chief. I like, I like the Black and Beach, I love the Black and Beach CEO. You know, um, Steve Edwards, my friends, peers, and all others, down to and including uh, janitors and guards. I really am enamored with all those kinds of people, and most importantly, the people that a lot of people just, just, just walk by. And as many, some of you here know, you know, when I did my retirement, in the front row was my family, and there were, and the janitors and the cleaning lady from uh, from uh, my, the building with us in, in Ditra. So I, I I believe in inspiring people by truly love, loving them, and, uh, and 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 so when I think about love, I think about taking care of, inspiring, and enabling people is the equivalent of love and leadership, and I think. I've been thinking a lot lately, or the last few years, about love as a component of leadership. That there is a love component to leadership traits that's pretty interesting to, th to think about. And, um, and, you know, there was this article I read about this person when they interviewed these, all these accomplished people when they were like 80 years and older. And a, and a number of these people said, um, and they said, the question was, what, what what would you have wanted to accomplish, or do you wish you would have accomplished more? And a number of these people said, I wish I would have loved more. Not me. That ain't going to be me. And I hope it's not going to be you. Because I, I believe, you know, you know I, I've accomplished, and what I've accomplished is not because I'm so smart or so ambitious or so connected or anything, but because I cared for, inspired, and tried to en enable people. Why? Because I loved them. You know? And two, just a couple quick stories. I was going to give a, I was giving a, very quick, I was going to give a, um, I was giving a, a leadership uh, series of, of talks to uh, the next gen groups in, in, in Black and Beach. And, and three days before I started the session, which was going to be about the impact of leaders in, in people's lives, I got a message on LinkedIn from this, this guy called, this guy Craig Godzilla. And I, and, um, and I, I didn't, I didn't know who it was, and, and this is what his message was. I want to, he says, he says, I wanted to write and thank you for your leadership when I was able to serve under your Fort Leonard Wood command as assistant commandant. Well, I'll never forget the motivational encouragement of your story, which was the bridge story, um, but really, I, I took, my takeaway was been your countless talks and speeches regarding the importance of balance. When I mentioned the word balance, Anne Marie, his wife, knows the exact origin from our years at Fort Leonard Wood. Um, we both wanted you, you to know that this lasting influence has made a tremendously positive impact on me, our lives, and our children. He is an investment banker in, um, got out of the Army, he's an investment banker in, in, in Wall Street, very, 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 very uh, successful. You know, I used to take pictures uh, of, of folks and, uh, and would write notes on them just to try and give thanks in a way, that a lasting thanks to, to, to people. And, um, and just this last week, a Command Sergeant Major Mello from uh, Fort Leonard Wood passed away. And he was an iconic um, Sergeant Major. Went to everything and supported everything. And at, and at his funeral, they had four pictures. Four pictures. A picture of himself, a picture of his wife, a picture of his children, and a blown-up picture of this picture I had given him and written a note about how great and thankful I was to him. Impactful 
on him. Um, now that they come, they, the, uh, our, our, our boss visited Savannah District where I, where I, when I was here in SAD, 15 years after I'd been there. In the back of the person he was meeting um, uh, was a, one of those he's saying pictures. And he came back and he goes, man, your pictures you know, every, 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 are, are everywhere. Heck, I mean, you go to Jason, you go to Jason Kelly's office, there's one on the wall. There you know, they are. Um, you know, I, uh, I, uh, my, 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 my last one is, I, I one time did a, did a picture of a World War II vet, took a picture of a vet when I was at Fort Leonard Wood, and, uh, and, and about, literally about two months later, his wife calls me and says, um, I want you to know that uh, my husband, James, uh, passed away. And, uh, and the reason I'm calling you and getting told you is because he was suffering of cancer, very, very painful cancer, and what he would do each, each when it was got really bad, he'd take that picture, this picture off his wall, I mean off his mantle, and he'd sit in his rocking chair and just look at it and be very, very content, and it would be kind of a, a content thing. And, uh, and I'm saying to myself, oh, oh, I'm so glad that he was able to do that. And then she says, would you mind doing his eulogy? <laughs> which I did, which I did. Okay, last thing, my last point. Um, love, dot, 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 people. Here's one for you. Someone sent me a note a few years ago after you know, some article or some um, recognition of, that happened to me. And this person wrote, making a positive change in a person's life is a miracle. And when amplified by many, you can move mountains. The story has never strayed far from its owner. You knew it as a lieutenant and have mastered it over a lifetime. You care about people. It's the best thing you will ever accomplish. I am fortunate to have experienced it my whole life. That person that wrote that is in this room. He's my son, Jason. Let me read this again. Making a positive change in a person's life is a miracle. And when amplified by many, you can move mountains. The story has never strayed far from its owner. You knew it as a lieutenant and mastered it over a lifetime. You care about people. It's the best thing you will ever accomplish. I am fortunate to have experienced my whole life. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, remain standing for the conclusion of today's ceremony with the playing of the engineer in Army Songs. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Thank you for joining us.